Enterprises have long relied on KPIs to align all areas of the business, and this applies to digital initiatives as well. Many executives at large enterprises are now connecting the dots between the performance of their core business and the relevance of digital capabilities powered by APIs. To facilitate the next steps in realizing value from these critical assets, enterprises need to become savvy in the use of key performance indicators, or KPIs, to drive digital programs. Good KPIs are sometimes not obvious at first glance, and supporting metrics play an important role. Stronger programs will often proactively shape their highest level goals and KPIs to anticipate broader transformation, following some important guidelines. Number one, focus on driving growth, breadth, and speed of API adoption by the application programs that depend on them. Two, accelerate the velocity of iterations in not only API and app development, but also the creation of user-facing digital experiences. And three, align the metrics of the API program with developers and channel partners using those APIs. We have seen some common pitfalls when defining metrics at the onset of API programs. The program should not be a standalone P&L function with metrics set in isolation. Generally, avoid using number of APIs produced as a top-line target. Publishing an API is not the same as creating value through the consumption of that API. Lastly, avoid measuring your API program like a project. Targeting and making decisions on APIs in traditional terms of budget, timeline, and quality will force managers to focus on completion and timeline rather than creating value. The traditional project metrics can still be measured, but always be careful of incentives and behaviors this will cast on your team. Whatever direction you take, the first step is to establish KPIs for your API program that are direct contributors to enterprise metrics. Connect these enterprise metrics to digital experiences and measure the velocity at which digital experiences are created. These are most important metrics. In most cases, the API programs to succeed the enterprise must align metrics for all elements in the digital value chain, including backend systems, API teams, API developers, apps, and end users. This might be a lot to process at one time. So let's take a look one at a time at some possible KPIs in your API program. We'll describe what each one of them are, their benefits, and some of the pitfalls and potential submetrics. One common metric we see is number of APIs. Often used to drive short-term productivity, this target often ignores the fact that APIs must also have easy to use utility. Segment out your APIs by their various functions or capabilities and look for ways to measure reusability rather than just volume. Tracking the number of developers is a target commonly intended to improve adoption. You can target metrics developers' retention rates as well as the number of active developers within your community. Some also use a conversion funnel approach to see how they can convert from developers who are browsing, registered but not active, to trial user, to actual production usage. Be cautious in making this a singular focus though. Pair this with feedback from developers and look at where developers drop off over time. Customers don't experience APIs directly. They only experience the apps that they use the APIs with. Be careful using this KPI. This target is important. So measure this with good API instrumentation and app analytics. For example, knowing how many customers are connected to all of your company's apps using the same authentication API would be a great way to showcase the reuse of that API itself. Depending on the type of business you have, this may or may not be an immediate KPI. However, the potential of APIs to expand your ecosystem is a powerful capability. Use this target to reach out to partners, drive adoption, and demonstrate the success of the platform expansion. This is a key ecosystem metric for any platform. This target may be useful to drive reach. Use this target by segmenting the apps of partner and or internal and by line of business. If the program creates a lot of apps that are only used internally and not by customers, it can sometimes feed internal criticism and abandonment of the program. This one is a great productivity metric. In order to enable app teams to rapidly create new customer experiences, API teams should become adept at quickly turning around needed APIs. 
Some teams will create a metric called time to hello world, describing and benchmarking the end-to-end -end time to create a very basic API. You can define it any way you want, but it's a catchy and instantly understood concept. Reducing developer friction to access your API platform is a key target. Start measuring this early on and distinguish between the duration for the initial signup, the duration it takes to get apps approved, to the duration it takes to go live with an app. Traffic growth helps with both indication of usage, but also scalability. This target helps API programs develop a strong DevOps and RunOps culture by continuously monitoring, improving, and driving value through the APIs. Be sure to target this with a related metrics up and down the value chain, including latency, reliability, and scalability. This target focuses the API program to build relevance across the business and to drive reuse of the APIs through backend assets they connect to. Particularly valuable APIs, such as those that provide access to unique data or proprietary functionality, may become a greater asset to partners and provide entrance to new markets. This KPI also helps the team escalate blockers to the proper executive level for resolution. APIs themselves don't always reduce costs, but they are critical to broader internal refactoring of value chains, which do reduce costs. It can be hard to initially measure cost reduction from APIs, and sometimes it stirs dissent amongst managers. Significant cost reductions are usually realized from the rise in API reuse and increase in APIs allowing the company to purchase more of the off-the-shelf software. For example, HR can replace old internal systems and process by exposing the data through APIs to better cloud-based HR software. Even more compelling, instead of taking capital investment and building new consumer-facing or customer-facing applications, the company can invite partners to co-innovate and build multiple experiences leveraging the company's APIs and core assets. This leads to a reduction from reduced research and development spend within the company, and in relation to the speed and market, the new channels the company is able to access by going to multiple markets with multiple partners. Direct revenue can be a tricky KPI to target. APIs are enablers. They need an adoption cycle before proving their relevance to revenue, unless it's a purely API business model. If you're not one of these kinds of businesses, you might see a way to upcharge and claim a share of the revenue for the usage of your API similar to a cost of goods sold or a chargeback method. Instead of targeting MPS of those digital experiences, use MPS to gauge the app developers who are adopting and calling APIs from within their apps. To get even more detailed, you can measure the MPS between internal app developers versus external and partner app developers. In early stages, your APIs and documentation may be really immature. So MPS is less useful than just getting qualitative user feedback. Another aspect to target is the quality of your APIs. Track response times, error rates on your APIs, and whether they meet the SLA and standards you're expecting. Don't boil the ocean and focus your team on a handful or less of measurements that are important to the program's success. You can prioritize them or change them over time. KPIs or metrics are living tools and should be revisited periodically. What is important at the beginning will not be important later on. Here's an example how we suggest pacing these metrics and their focus areas over time. When getting started in the crawl phase, track the number and type of APIs produced in the engagement of the app developers. Focus on execution improvement with KPIs for speed and quality of API development. Once APIs are in use, shift the focus to adoption and increase of the ecosystem. Focus on the number of apps, the number of partners, or the number of customers that are using the newly minted APIs. Once a good production cadence around APIs is operational and begins to run, add more familiar business impact reporting to the dashboard, such as direct revenue, MPS, breadth of business, and cost reduction as is agreed to with the rest of the executive team. If you want more information, please check out the community for ebooks, articles, and other related topics. Thank you for watching.